Shalom, shalom. Davon Mays here <clears throat> with Clouds of Torah. We're going to continue the series. Is there a monotheistic trinity? This is part six. To whom then will you liken God? Let's get right into this. So, um, question. Were Moses, Chemosh, were the gods of Egypt equal to God? Who, you know... We can play with the name Yud, Hey, Vav, and Hey, Yud, Hey, <clears throat> Vav, and Hey, the Lord, the God of Israel, however you want to say this, right? We know who we're talking about the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe. But we see other gods mentioned in the Tanakh. Now, does that mean that they're actual deities? Or are these just other people or men with the title of a God, like we showed with the judges, people who have power or rulership, judges, right? So Exodus 7, 1, it says, So the Lord says to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Now, do we see anybody worshiping Moses or giving him the title of the creator. No, we don't see anything like that. But it clearly says, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. Would that mean Moses would be equal to God? No, because he was appointed this position, right? And he basically was just a judge over the Egyptians. Numbers 33 and 4. For the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn to whom whom the Lord had killed among them, also on their gods, the Lord had executed judgments. So were the Egyptian gods literally people that had these judgments taken out on them? Or were they concepts? Were they, were they statues? There's a lot of people, you know, who talk about these things, but um, what do you think? Let's go with they were actual deities, just for argument's sake. It says, also on their gods, the Lord had executed judgments. That means they're subject to God if he judged them, right? And what happened to Egypt? He destroyed it. If there were concepts, it was God showing them that he overpowers all their concepts. They worship the sun. He made it black. They worshiped the Nile or gave credit to the Nile feeding them, you know, with the crops and stuff. He turned it into blood. If they worshiped um, fertility, he had the animals eat up the, 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 the grasshoppers and the locusts eat up the crops. Right. So everything that would be considered some type of power. He uh, showed them that he controls nature, for lack of a better term. Jeremiah 43, 12, I will kindle a fire in the house of the gods of Egypt and he shall burn them and carry them away captive. And he shall array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment and he shall go out from there in peace. So when it says I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt. So again, the gods of Egypt are being dealt with and he shall burn them and carry them away captive. Were these idols that was carried away captive or were they people who had the title of God carried away captive? Because can you burn a deity and carry him away captive? Or is this just the people who are considered gods? What exactly is going on in Jeremiah 43, 12? And again, if you're just going to say they're gods, are they equal to the most high? Judges eleven twenty four. Will you not possess whatever Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whatever the Lord your God takes possession of before us, we will possess. <clears throat> so Chemosh, again, another deity, but was it an actual being? a physical being, a spiritual being named Kamash, or was it a man who had the title of a god that was worshipped? Was it a statue that people gave the title of a god 
in the status of a real God that was just worshiped. Why do I ask this? Because in Jeremiah 48, 7, it says, For because you trusted in your works and your treasures, you also shall be taken, and Chemosh shall go forth into captivity, his priests and his princes together. Now, is this talking about the people of Chemosh? Because it says this is the name of the, one of their gods. This is Chemosh your God. In Judges eleven twenty four, but in Jeremiah forty eight seven it says, "Kemosh shall go forth into captivity." So is this just the concept of them having a god, and the people will go forth in, into captivity, or is it the actual god Kemosh that shall go forth into captivity? Either way, if it's a man or a, let's just say for argument's sake. It's a, a, a physical or a spiritual being named Kimosh. He's subject to the Most High. Why am I bringing all, all these other things up, right? What does this have to do with the monotheistic trinity? People have to make Jesus a God to even put him in the playing field of being part of the trinity. He has to be equal to God. So they have to fit him into scenarios. But again, like I showed earlier, just the term God itself does not mean creator. It just means somebody who has a little bit of authority. Not even know so much a little bit, but somebody with some power, right? <clears throat> Moses had it. He was called a God. The Egyptians had it. Pharaoh was seen as a God. The Romans thought their emperors were gods. They deified them. Kimosh is seen as a god, right? So, Molech. There's other. There's other deities. Baal, right? We can go on and on about things that people turned into gods, but what power did they really have? Were they equal to God in any type of way? So, even if you want to make Jesus a god, would he still be equal to the Most High? Let's see. Isaiah 40 and 18. To whom then will you liken God or what likeness will you compare to him? Isaiah 40 and 25. To whom then will you liken me that I should be equal to him, saith the Holy One. Not the Holy Three. Not the Holy Us. The Holy one Isaiah 46 5 to whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike I think that might be a typo to whom will you liken God equality because that's the Trinitarian stance that Jesus the Holy Spirit and God are equal but separate Equal but separate. <clears throat> so this term Godhead, what is actually does that mean? What's a Godhead? <clears throat> Colossians 2 and 9. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So it's saying that in Jesus dwells all three concepts of the Trinity. That's what the average Christian Trinitarian would tell you. Again, not all Christians believe in the Trinity. But the ones that do, this is one of the verses that they're going to go to. <clears throat> Romans 1 and 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they were without excuse. <clears throat> this word Godhead, what does that mean? 2320 in the Strong's Theotis, Godhead, Deity, from Theos, Divinity, Abstractly, Godhead. Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Dictionary says most Christians, not all, most, oops, most Christians believe that there are three separate persons, separate persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that make up the Godhead. Now, Philippians 2 and 6 is another one that they go to. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. 
did not consider robbery to be equal with God. So it's basically saying Jesus didn't have a problem with being God and he didn't think it was robbery, meaning there was no problem, right? He did not consider it a problem to be equal with God, but was he really equal with God? What about the Holy Spirit? You see, that's a lot of a lot of the times you see these verses, the Holy Spirit's not mentioned in a lot of these verses. It'll talk about God and Jesus, but it won't talk about the Holy Spirit. You really kind of see that in um when well, we know John 1, 5 and 7 through 8 was was added. But really in the Gospels, when it says baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's kind of, you know, where, where that stems from. But it says in the form of God. What does that mean? Who being in the form of God? When was he in the form of God? In heaven? Well, nobody would have saw that, right? Was he in the form of God on earth? Because if all men are made in the image of God, then we're all in the form of God, if you want to look at it from that perspective. The problem is, in John 5, 7, it says, And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. So according to John, and who wrote this about Jesus, you don't even know what he looks like, and you never even heard his voice. So how would you compare anything to something you've never experienced or seen? Now, the funny thing is, this would contradict the whole experience at Mount Sinai. You've neither heard his voice at, you have neither heard his voice at any time? What did they hear at Mount Sinai? How did they get the commandments? True, they didn't see no form, right? But they definitely heard a voice. <laughs> so this verse tells Christians nobody saw Jesus in the Tanakh, and if they did, he was not God. Because if you never heard his voice or seen his form, how can you say, well, this verse is talking about Jesus? Because it describes something. When they say, oh, that, that angel in the burning bush that Moses saw, that was Jesus. Well, that angel talked to Jesus. I mean, that angel spoke to Moses, right? And it says, you have neither heard his voice at any time, because they'll say that angel was Jesus. But if you haven't heard his voice, how would you, what, what's, what are you comparing it to? And John obviously didn't read Deuteronomy or Exodus. Isaiah 43, 10, you are my witnesses, says the Lord and my servant, who I'm... I have chosen that you may know and believe and understand that I am he before me. There was no God form, neither shall there be after me. So. Obviously. There was no God before God, right? But it says, neither shall there be after me. And we know Jesus was created. How do we know this? Because Revelation tells us. Jesus has a God. Jesus has a mother. Mothers create babies. With the help of a man, of course. But the mother, <laughs> you know, had a huge part in creating Jesus. So he has a creator. Um, and he wasn't a God because it says, neither shall there be another God after me. Jesus has a mother and he has a God. God, whom the Christians will say, oh no, God the Father, right? They like to separate God with God the Father. The Father doesn't have a mother or a God. But Jesus does. That's not equal. That is not equal. How do we know this? How many times does God have to say that there 
does, does the Tanakh have to say? There is none like you. First Chronicles 17, 20. Oh, Lord, there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. So the whole time Israel was worshiping the Most High, according to the Torah, based on the laws, Nobody said that there is this other deity or anybody else besides God. Now you want to take that in the in the in the context of there's nobody else, or are you saying that beside me there's no other God beside or like next to me? Because the New Testament says Jesus is at the right hand of God. Is that figuratively? Is that literally? Then where's the Holy Spirit at? Because if God is the Holy Spirit, that would make two. Right? Deuteronomy 4.35. To you it was shown. It was shown that you may know that the Lord himself is God and there is no other beside him. There is none other besides him. It was shown that you may know. It was shown. Psalm 86 and 8. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. So <clears throat> the gods, who are the gods? We've shown Gods can be rulers, judges, kings, right? <clears throat> Moses was a god unto Pharaoh. Judges. So, but they're not like God. None like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. Now, we know false prophets can do miracles. Regular prophets can do miracles too, but they don't have works like the Most High. They're not creating universes. They'll make a storm come, you know, Elijah shut up the heavens, so there was no rain, you know, so, you know, healing people. But because you may remember even the Egyptians, they threw down their staff and they became serpents. Um, they they duplicated what Moses was doing until it got to like the lice. It was too small. They said, this is God. We can't we can't duplicate this one. Jeremiah 10 and 6, and as much as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great and your name is great in, in might. <clears throat> you are great and your name is great. There's none like you. So they're not three separate equal persons in the Trinity because there is none like the Most High. And there's, there's very distinct differences between Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. According to Jesus. Did y'all know that? <clears throat> We're going to get to that. Nor has any eye seen any God besides you. Isaiah 64, 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you. Who acts for the who acts for the one who waits for him? Nor I has seen any gods besides you. So that means nobody saw Jesus anywhere in the Tanakh. Because we know God says, You can't see me and live. So they'll say, Oh, that was God the Son. But it says, There is no I has seen any God besides you. Because if they're separate, remember we read in the Miriam De in the Miriam uh, Webster, it says the Christians believe that they're three separate. Let's go back here. There are three separate persons that make up the Godhead. So if no eye has seen any God besides you, nobody has seen this so-called God the Son made up concept. In the Tanakh. So Jesus was not seen in Genesis with Abraham. So when you want to go to Genesis 18 
and say that that was Jesus, stop. In Exodus at the burning bush, that was not Jesus in the bush, stop. Or Daniel with the three in the fire, where it clearly tells you that that was an God sent his angel, but that was not Jesus. Because nor I have seen any God besides you, because if you can't see God and live. I mean, I don't know how clear that has to be. Then the New Testament tells you, see, the funny thing is Christians want you to believe their book, but they don't even believe their book. John 1, 18, no, I, no one has seen God at any time. So you couldn't have seen him in Genesis 18, and you couldn't have seen him in Daniel, and you couldn't have seen him in Exodus. That's not Jesus. And if it was, Jesus is not God. So even if you grant them, okay, that was Jesus, it's not God, because it says no one has seen God at any time. In the New Testament, we don't even have to go to the, to the Tanakh. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. But clearly, no one has seen God at any time. So nobody saw Jesus as God in the Tanakh. John 5, 37, and the father himself who sent me. So at that point, you're like a messenger, right? You're just an angel. You're you're a delivery boy, right? The father himself, himself, not the father, ourself, who sent us, right? That's how this should, if this Trinity was really real, it should read like that. The father, ourself, who sent us, has testified of us, right? But that's not what it says. It says, and the father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. Well, remember, it says Jesus being in the form of God. When did who when did anybody see this? Because Jesus says nobody has seen that. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. They don't even believe what he says about this. So how Paul wrote that, he didn't read the Gospels. Who being in the form of God, when was Jesus in the form of God? Unless he's just like, when we're made in the image of God, then he's nothing special if that's the case. He's just like us. Because we know for in the image of God, he made men. Genesis 2, 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and then he put the man whom he had formed. There he put the man whom he had formed. Genesis 9, 6, whoever sheds man's blood, by his blood shall he, <laughs> by his blood shall be shed. Let me read that again. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man. So we're all made in the image of God. Philippians 2, 6 says, who being in the form of God did not consider a robbery to be equal with God. Well, they're not equal. That's the thing. Because if they were equal, Christians wouldn't try to separate the father from the son when you ask them, show me Jesus in the Tanakh and show me somebody talking to him. Oh, that was God, but that was the son. That was God the Son. That wasn't God the Father. That means they're not the same. That's not equal. If people can see Jesus and talk to him and live, but God said, you can't see me and live. That's not the same. Look what Romans says about this. Romans 1.23 and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. They made God into an image. That's why people have pictures of Jesus in their house. God says, don't make no images of nothing that looks like a male. Deuteronomy chapter 4. So not only have they made Jesus into the image 
made like a corruptible man and birds. What is it? They call the Holy Spirit a dove in the Gospels. A four footed animal. What is Jesus called? A lamb. So they have changed the glory of God into a man, a bird, and a four-footed animal. That's their version of God. A man, a corruptible man, according to Romans. A bird, which is the Holy Spirit, that's the dove. And a lamb, the four-footed animal. This is in the New Testament. This is in Romans. Exactly what Paul said don't do, the Christians did it. Not that Paul is kosher anyway, but just pointing out the facts. So again, Philippians 2, 6, and 7. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. So at what point was he in the form of God? In heaven? We read there was no God beside him. So if you're in the form of God, but you're not God, that means you're next to him or there's, you're in the vicinity somewhere. But God says, there is no other God besides me. And I'm not going to form any other God after me. So now it says, but he had no, uh, he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant. So now God has become a servant. Really? And coming in the likeness of men. Well, that means they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible men. So Paul, who wrote Philippians and wrote Romans, just basically shot himself in the foot. There's people who even say Paul didn't even write these letters. Or he may might have wrote like seven of them, but there's iffy and there's different authors and, you know, it doesn't even matter to me, but whether he wrote them or not, this contradicts itself. You can't say that he changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man. And then tell you he came in the likeness of a man. Why would he do that? If Paul's telling you don't do that, why would God do that? Look what Ezekiel says about this. Ezekiel 16, 17, you have also taken your beautiful jewelry from my gold and my silver, which I have given you and made for yourself male images and played the harlot with them. What does that mean? You commit an idolatry. You cheating on me with images of men. Image made like corruptible man. Why is there a picture of Jesus in your house? Why is there statues of Jesus in the churches? Why are people bowing down to him and kissing his feet? You're playing the harlot with an image of a male from the gold that the Most High gave you, my gold and my silver, which I have given you. You have also taken your beautiful jewelry from my gold and my silver, which I have given you, and made yourself male images and played the harlot with them. You cheating on the Most High with your images of Jesus. Read Ezekiel. So back to this equal. Merriam-Webster.com dictionary. Equal. Of the same measure, quantity, amount, or numbers as another. Identical in mathematical value or logical denotation. Equivalent, like in quality, nature, or status. Like in quality, nature, or status. So what are we going to go to? John 10, 30, very famous, right? I and my father are one. I and my father. It doesn't say I am my father. 
I and my father are one. If you have a father, that means you're not him. Because God doesn't have a father. The father doesn't have a father. So again, Jesus was created. He has a father. He has a mother. He has a God. Now, this concept of one, what exactly, what does it really mean? Are they literally the same? Or is it just like like-minded? John 17, 11. Now, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Holy Father. What does holy mean? Separate. Separate. I come to you. I come to you. He doesn't say, I come to us. I come to you. If you go to somebody, that means you're not that person. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name, not our name, not my name. Keep through your name. Even if you want to say, well, Jesus' name is Yeshua, and Yeshua means God is salvation. Or Yah is salvation. But that's not what you hey vape means. So God's name does not mean what Jesus' name means. Jesus' name has God's name in it, just like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Obadiah. You can go down to how many different names in the Tanakh have the most high's name in it. That doesn't make them equal to God. So keep through your name, those whom you have given me, not those whom we have given us. Like when, when words stop meaning stuff, then you're just going to lose your society. Like it's going to crumble. Words have meaning. Those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are, that they may be one. Now, does that mean that they're literally one? Or does that mean they're like-minded? Because we know clearly the disciples were not one. They had different parents, right? They weren't twin brothers. Well, there's some, there was some twins in there. And people even argue that one of them was, Jesus was actually a twin too. It's one of the arguments, but that's not for here. But anyway, that they may be one as we are. Were the disciples really one or was it a concept of being like-minded? They thought alike, right? But did they really think alike? Because clearly Jesus and God don't think alike. Jesus will have you to believe that, but they had different wills. Yeah. I didn't come to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. That's two different wills. That's not equal. That's not the same. That's not the same quality, nature, or status. If you didn't want to do something and somebody else wanted you to do it, y'all not the same. They got two different agendas. <clears throat> Again, like in quality, nature, or status, John 17, 11. Now, I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Were the disciples one? Did they have the same quality, nature, or status? Let's see. First Timothy 2, 12. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Did Moses teach that? No. Deborah was a prophet and a judge. And she had authority over people. Oh, but Moses wasn't a disciple of Jesus, right? Correct. But Moses was a disciple of the Most High. And God taught Moses that in, in uh, the laws, right? <laughs> God taught Moses those things. Uh, Miriam was a prophetess of the Most High. We have female prophets who had authority over men. Now, does Jesus teach this 
concept of women having authority over a man. That they should be silent in the church. That's coming from Paul. Right? Did any of the prophets or uh, disciples of Jesus teach that? This is strictly coming from Paul. Because he says it here and he says it in the Corinthians, right? So the disciples, were the disciples one? Did they have the same quality, nature, or status? So let's just deal with Paul. Since we're talking about Paul here, right? Paul does not want women to teach or have authority over a man or to be in silence. Today, today in America, I ain't going to speak for, for no other countries. In America, how many women preachers are there out there? Are they one? Are these disciples of Jesus one in quality, nature, or status? Because they're not holding to this. They're not holding to this verse that they do not allow women to preach or have authority over a man. There's all kind of woman preachers out there. First Corinthians 12, 27 through 30. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Not one, but members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. All are apostles? Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. Why? Because they don't have the same quality, nature, or status. The disciples are not one. There's 50,000 denominations today. So when it says that they may be one as we are, they're not one. They don't even have the same mindset as Jesus and God don't even have the same mindset. Clearly. Jesus didn't even fulfill the prophecies in the Tanakh that so-called is about him. According to him, saying Moses wrote about me in the Psalms and in, in the law. <clears throat> well, how come you didn't do what that said? Oh, when he come back, he going to do it. They changed the whole script up. Now it's all about the resurrection, right? Nowhere do we does it say once you find out who comes back from the dead, that's who the Messiah is. We don't read nothing about that. So getting back to this like and quality nature or status. The disciples were not on the same page. Paul was arguing with Peter. Paul says he checked Peter. Matter of fact. Paul tries to usurp the authority of the other apostles, calling them the so-called apostles, right? Like Paul was real slick with his tongue when you read his letters, but he's saying that women can't teach or preach. Then he's saying, you know, there's apostles and then there's prophets and then there's teachers, all these things. Right. But all that did was break up the church into all these different denominations. So let's let's stick on this concept of like and quality, nature or status. Matthew 12, 31 through 32. Now, this is Jesus talking. And it's so interesting that Christians don't even believe what he says. They'll just ignore it. Therefore, I say to you. Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. That's not true because we read in the Tanakh. If you speak against the Most High's name, it will not be forgiven. Read Leviticus. Read Leviticus about this. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. 
Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. So now and in the future, you can't sin against the Holy Spirit, which means that's not Jesus. He says it will be forgiven him if you sin against the Son of Man. But if you sin against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. Not now or never. Now, if God is the Holy Spirit, then he and Jesus are not equal. Every blasphemy will be forgiven. That's not true. Blasphemy against the name of the Most High? When it says, don't take my name in vain, that's a problem. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, now who's the Son of Man? Clearly this is talking about Jesus, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. So you can speak against Jesus, you good. You can get forgiveness, but against the Holy Spirit, no forgiveness according to Jesus. That means they're not equal. Daniel 4 and 9, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you. The spirit of the holy God. That's the Holy Spirit is God himself. He is holy and he is a spirit. And no secret troubles you. Explain to me the vision of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. Why, why did he go to Daniel? Because he says, I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you. Right. How do we know Jesus ain't God? According to Jesus again, Matthew 19, 17. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. I should have put the verse that precedes this when he says, good teacher, what must I do to attain eternal life? That's why he says, why do you call me good? But somebody walks up, rich man says, hey, man, hey, good teacher. What must I do to attain eternal life? Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, not us, not three. See, even Jesus says God is one and he ain't like me. He's good. He's the only good one. Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. He doesn't say that is me. That is us. He doesn't say that is God and the Holy Spirit. He said that is God. This is Jesus telling you he is not equal to God and he is not equal to the Holy Spirit. This is Matthew. This ain't me. This is Matthew 1917, Matthew 12, 31 through 30. You telling you Jesus is not equal to God or the Holy Spirit. He had, there is no Godhead. That's in the New Testament. I can of myself do nothing because you're not equal to God. John 530, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That's two different wills, y'all. That's not equality. I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what God wants me to do. You're not the same then. If you tell your psychiatrist, I want to do the right thing, but my other self don't want to do the right thing. You that's a call to conflict. You're conflicted. That means you're not on the same page. Who's really driving? Now you can have um a situation of, oh man, I don't want to go to work, but I know I have to. But it's, I don't want to go to work, but I have to. You don't say, oh, I don't want to go to work, but he has to. I don't want to go to work, but he has to. If you told your psychiatrist that, he might put you on medicine. 
And if you go further on that road, you might end up with some rooms around you. Padded rooms. My, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Did you send yourself? And that means whoever sent you had a different will. That's not you. Isaiah 44, 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone. Who spreads abroad the earth by myself. Jesus can't do nothing by himself. God says, I do all this stuff by myself. I do it all alone. I make all things. I stretch out the heavens alone. I spread out the earth by myself. Jesus says, I can do nothing of my, I can of myself do nothing. God says, I do everything by myself. Isaiah 45, 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Jesus says, I can of myself do nothing. No, no mention of the Holy Spirit, right? When Jesus is talking. But God says, I do everything. Isaiah 45, 23, I have sworn by myself, not by ourselves, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that to me, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall take an oath to me, myself. The word has gone out of my mouth. Doesn't say we have sworn by ourselves. The word has gone out of our mouth and that to us, every knee shall bow. Doesn't say that. Myself, my mouth, to me. You cannot, you have to completely just ignore this. And just say, oh, well, I, I, I believe. I have strong faith. In what? Ignoring <laughs> your book? <laughs> what, is it? what is that? I do not seek my own will. He tells you he's not even doing what he wants to do. It's somebody else, right? John 14, 20, 28. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father for my Father is greater than I. Is that why he seeks the will of the Father? Because the Father is greater than him? That's not equality in status or nature. John 5.30, again, I can, of, I can of myself do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Matthew 26.39, he went a little further and fell on his face, right? In the garden of Gethsemane, he's praying to himself all night, right? Or is he praying to somebody else? Why would he be pleading with himself? Uh, he went a little further and fell on his face and praised him. Oh, my father. He has a father. The father doesn't have a father. The father doesn't have a mother. The father is not a son of David. If it is possible. Now he's asking, can I, can I do this? Because remember, he can do nothing of himself. Let this cup passed for me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That's sub submitting yourself to somebody else. That's not equality. You have to ask your boss to take days off of work. He doesn't have to ask you to take days off of work because y'all not equal. He can fire you. You cannot fire him. Psalm 119 and 13. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. That is so true. Does the God of Israel say he can die? Deuteronomy 32 and 40. For I raise my hand to heaven and say as I live forever. 
I raise my hand to heaven and say, as I live forever, I live forever. So we don't see that God can die. Acts 10, 39, and we are witnesses of all things, which he did both in the land of Jew the Jews and, of, and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Who was that about, y'all? Matthew 16, 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day and be killed. Who is that talking about? First Thessalonians 2, 15, who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us. They do not please God and are contrary to all men. Kill both the Lord Jesus. Did they kill God? Theocide? I think it's called theocide. When you kill God. That's a, that's a way out. Revelation 2 and 8. And to the angel of the church and smear on the right. These, th the, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. Well, God said, as I live forever. But this person said was dead and came to life. The Tanakh says the Most High is eternal. He doesn't come to life. He is life. He created life. This person was dead. So you see, the there there is no equality. There's no like and equality nature or status between Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or God. You can't have a trinity like that. Not according to the definition that they're separate but equal. I mean, I don't I don't know what kind of um, linguistic acrobatics you'd have to, you know, pull and how much scripture you have to ignore. But if, if you actually believe that now, if you were told that and nobody actually explained it to you. And that's just, you know, you, what you've been regurgitating, that's the that's most of the Christians. Right. But if you actually studied and came to the conclusion after all the stuff, forget me. For, forget my when I throw my you know opinions, but just reading the text that I've read, forget my commentary on the text, just the actual text itself, you you can't get around it. So with that being said, we're gonna stop there, and I hope you study. Um. Peace and blessings to everybody who support. Uh, thanks for buying the books. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for subscribing. Um, really appreciate it. Um, study, pray, uh, repent, do some charity. Um, enjoy life, though, too. So, you know, um, don't be angry with people who disagree with you. You know, just make your point and move on. That's all you can do. Don't let them upset you, um, you know. Most of us that came about a Christianity kind of know the mindset. So don't be mad at people. Just uh, try to, you know, encourage them to study and not just, you know, um, don't call them stupid because it, it's an emotional uh, attachment. Really, it's really an emotional attachment, just like breaking up with, you know, a, a spouse or something like it hurts, you know, and it's it can be scary. You know what I mean? But um. With that being said, uh, appreciate y'all. Shalom.